know, I think that it's quite exciting times and uh, metastatic cholangiocarcinoma with the identification of various multiple pathways that are potentially actionable. And I think there's been a lot of excitement now, rightfully so, for the subset of patients that have FGFR2 uh, fusions and rearrangements. We have now one approved drug, pemigatinib, and another drug that has a fast track designation, infigratinib. And the future will be better understanding of the resistant patterns and identifying other FGFR inhibitors that can be utilized in these patients upon progression, and perhaps also looking at combination therapies to overcome the mechanisms of resistance. The mechanisms of resistance is an area of uh, active research, and we do have some understanding. We know that the FGFR receptor actually does crosstalk with other receptors. And for example, some of the mechanisms of resistance that have been identified have been amplifications of the EGFR pathway, MET pathway, um, as well as upregulation of the PI3 kinase pathway and uh, um, the, the RAS MAP kinase pathway. In addition to that, uh, you could actually get mutations in these other pathways, including EGFR and MEC. Uh, and there is also, we are now finding that patients who progress on the FGFR2 inhibitors can actually develop mutations in the ATP binding site of these drugs that render them ineffective to the drug that they're on. So with the better understanding of the resistant patterns, we have the potential of considering future therapies that would allow us to combine them. And there is potentially a, a rationale for combining FGFR inhibitors with drugs that are targeting the EGFR, um, MEC, or PI3 kinase pathway. Uh, recently, there was uh, data presented looking specifically on one patient, for example, with infigratinib, who had progressed on the drug. And when the, uh, the, the patient's uh, tumor was sequenced, it was identified that they had developed a mutation in the ATP binding site. And in addition to that, they had an upregulation of the PI3 kinase pathway. And this suggests that perhaps combining an mTOR inhibitor along with the FGFR can uh, allow us to mitigate that resistance and allow for patients to respond again. And finally, there are differences between the FGFR inhibitors, and uh, there is a potential of using another FGFR inhibitor in case of resistance. And this is really the reason why I pointed out the possibility and need of doing next generation sequencing at progression to be able to identify these changes in the patient's tumor. In the realm of FGFR inhibitors, there's a lot of theoretical information out there of combining it with uh, EGFR-directed therapies, mTOR inhibitors, for example. But to my knowledge at this time, there are no active trials uh, looking at those combination therapies, and there's certainly a role to better understand this. In terms of chemotherapy, we now are seeing that perhaps combining chemotherapy with immunotherapy may give us higher results. And uh, recently, there's been a couple of abstracts that have been presented, as recent as this ASCO in 2020, that have shown, for example, that combination of gemcitabine, cisplatin with um, targeting immunotherapy with dobolumab, for instance, is associated with much higher response rates and progression-free survival. These are intriguing because it suggests that a combination of chemotherapy, immunotherapy, or even combination immunotherapy may have a role in uh, future treatment of this disease.